Hello and welcome to a series um, of videos on using Workflow First. Um, this is the first video where we're just going to go into the basics of creating an application and um, a little bit about what Workflow First actually is. Workflow First is a, um, a rapid application development platform. Um, very simple to use but also very scalable and can create applications that are very simple um, to very complex applications with thousands um, thousands of forms um, and millions of records of data. Um, it emphasizes um, workflow um, but it's behind it is actually a hierarchical database and the hierarchical database is, is very easy to use because it's very similar to how you would use folders and files um, in a file system on Windows. So instead of dealing with lots of different relationships and complex uh, joins between tables, you instead have uh, folders and subfolders and store and relate your data like that, which is much easier to set up and use. You can create any type of application, any type of, any type of business application with Workflow First, um, a help desk, human resources applications, timesheet management. Um, you can replace those uh, unmanageable Excel spreadsheets that you have. Um, and you can do all of this very quickly because it's a rapid application development platform. Now, <clears throat> we're going to show you um, how you create a simple application. Um, so you, you always start out in this screen, which um, is our list of applications. Um, at the top you have a series of tabs, but applications is the tab that you're going to be using most of the time. So we have these handy buttons over here to create an application. Um, or you can also customize the sample application, which is um, called Approval Manager. We won't be doing that right now. So to start with, we're going to click um, Create Application. And here we're going to type in Demo App, because that's going to be the name of the application. So you click OK and it says your application has been created and it takes you to the application record, the configuration for your um, application that you've created. Um, now if you click back on the Applications tab, you'll now see this in the list. Now you can have as many applications as you like in this list. You could have you know, 100 applications in here if you like. Uh, right now we just have one. So to get back to it, you just click on it. Now. Right now, it's an empty application, but you can still publish it. You don't have to do anything. Um, you, you don't have to actually add anything to the application. You can publish it, and you'll see exactly what you have. So let's just click Publish, and you don't have to fill out any of these fields. Um, you can just click OK, and, um, and it creates your application. Now, when it creates it, it gives you the link to click on to go to the application. Um, so we're going to click that now and make sure that comes up. OK. So this is our um, bare bones template application. It says demo app at the top, which is the name that we gave it. It has a users tab and a configuration tab, but nothing else. So it's not particularly useful. These tabs are automatically added by the system. Um, they allow you to define the users that will log in. And on the configuration tab, there's information about, you know, um, you can override the email um, server settings, like who the emails are sent from and things like that. Let's go back to workflow first. Um, and we'll just add an application tab in. So to do that we just click new application tab. Now at any point um, when you want to add these actions uh, you may find that they're not actually visible because you're in a different place. Like for example if I click on the users tab um, I have different actions now to add subfields. Um, I can either go back to the application using the breadcrumb at the top, the navigation bar that we call it um, and it will come up again. Or at any time, you can also click What's Next, and you'll have the you'll have the options in here. Also, New Application tab is there, and Publish Application is is always available um, for the application. So even if I click on Users here and I go to What's Next, um, I can still publish the application. Uh, I can still add an application tab at the top level. So let's go back and add that application tab that we were talking about. Uh, okay, the application tab. We're gonna we're just gonna call it tickets because we're gonna create a little help desk application. So let's click OK on that. Now it takes you straight to the ticket screen. Um, so at this point, we can we can add some subfields. Now there are um, there are two ways or several ways of actually adding subfields. Um, these are gonna be the fields that show up on the form under this particular tab. We can either create um, a subfield by clicking Add Subfield here. 
we can also create it by adding it under nested fields um, at the bottom here. Or we can create it through workflow, in which case as we define the workflow, it will add the tickets to um, the tab. I just want to demonstrate what these, um, how it, the relationship between the workflow and the fields works. So I'm just going to actually just create a field temporarily. I'm going to click add subfield here. I'm going to call it test and click OK. So you'll see now we see it at the bottom here under nested fields. Now I'm going to publish that and click OK. And I'll switch over to this and press F5 to refresh the screen. Um, and you see now we have a tickets tab at the top. Now if we click plus, um, which is how you actually add a new record into it, if there's no workflow that is, if we click plus we'll see our field come up, um, test. And I can just type in some information there and we see it in the list. So that's created our test field here. Now I can easily just delete that field now if I don't want it. Um, but I just wanted to demonstrate that it automatically creates forms from the fields that you add. If we add another field in here, let's say we call it age, and we're going to change the data type to be a different one. Instead we're going to make it a number, an integer number, an integral number. So we'll click add on that. Let's publish this again and we'll see how it changes things. Go back over here, click F5, and now we have test and age as columns in here. And if I click plus, I get both of the fields. Um, so we can put in um, anything in here. So you see how it automatically builds up the form from the fields in the order that you specify the fields. Now that's a very useful feature because it actually saves you a lot of time when you're creating applications so that you don't have to go through defining how the forms look um, because that really does take a lot of time and it has a lot of advanced features in here to have like hierarchical nested forms, collapsible groups, drop down links, uh, file attachments, all kinds of uh, different features and it does a really great job of laying the, of laying the form out and making it usable not only on a PC but also on a mobile device if you're using your smartphone it'll it'll change the way the form looks so that it lays out better on a smartphone okay let's um, go back to um, what we were doing actually creating our help desk application now I'm gonna remove these these two fields so um, you know that's pretty easy to do I can just click um, this here and click on delete all and it will delete all the nested fields now you notice at the bottom um, underneath the application tab we have the list of nested fields as, as a tab down here. We also have events, actions, quick reports, things that we're not going to go into right now. But you'll notice that we also have this next to the record at the top of the record. Now this actually lets you navigate to that particular area so that it's the main thing on the screen. So if I click nested fields here it shows me, it'll show me the list of nested fields um, at the bottom. The same list that you see as a tab underneath the application tab. Um, this is just another way of navigating. Um, this will show you all of the different sub records whereas at the bottom it just shows you the first I think seven um, sub records. It's just another way of accessing the data. Okay let's um, move on and actually start creating um, a workflow. So we're going to add a workflow um, we don't need to change anything anything here at the moment because I'm just going to go through the basics of a workflow. So I'm just going to go ahead and click OK. Now this particular type of workflow is a creating workflow which means it creates new records. There's another type of workflow called an updating workflow um, that instead modifies an existing record. We're not going to go into that right now, we're just going to deal with creating new records. So it takes you straight into the workflow designer um, once you create the workflow. And you can have multiple workflows per application tab or per record. Um, in this case we're just going to have one because it's simpler. So to start with um, we're going to add an option under the workflow, the main workflow record here. This is going to translate into a form and a button that's going to show up. So we'll click add option and the stage is going to be um, enter ticket. You can specify a role here. Now that actually refers to a security role. It's a role that you associate with the user. Um, if you want to restrict the type of user that's going to actually be 
entering in or, or is going to be running this particular stage of the workflow. Um, we can also specify whether it'll be displayed as a button. Um, in this case, we do want enter ticket to, to be displayed as a button, so we'll set that to yes. Okay, now we move on to the input fields. So to go to the input fields, we just click input field here, and it comes up with a subform with some fields that we can enter in. Now, you have two options here. One is to enter a new field. The other is to select an existing field. This will be an existing field. Just like a minute ago, we created the test and the age fields. You'd be able to select those from this drop-down list here. But we're not going to be doing that now. We're going to be actually creating uh, fields as we go. Okay, so the first field is going to be um, a title. The second field, to add another field, notice I just click um, on the input field, the plus, again. For the second field, we're going to add the details. For the details, the data type of the field is not going to be just a few words. We want it to be potentially paragraphs of words. So we change it to text paragraphs. And that'll be the end of the first stage. So we click OK on that. OK. Now let's publish it just to see what that looks like, because I'd like to see what it looks like. So we go to What's Next, so we can see our publish application action. And then we click OK on that. Let's switch over to here. Press F5 to refresh. OK, now we have two records that we entered in earlier. Um, you know, they don't have any of the information of the new fields that we added in, so of course they're going to be empty. We'll leave them for now, we can delete them later on. But we do have our button here that says Enter Ticket. So now we can click Enter Ticket, and we can enter in the information about a ticket. My phone isn't working. Um, I need some help with my phone. There's no dialing tone. Okay, I click OK on that. And it will tell you created, enter ticket, enter successfully. Tickets workflow has been started, access it, click here. And you notice that that has actually created a new record in our tickets tab. And you click on the record, we see some information here. Um, the title that we entered in is there, the details are there. It's also added two other fields, originator and state. Originator is just the name of the user that actually started the workflow, and state is the state of the workflow, the current stage of the workflow, which refers to the enter, enter ticket stage that we just created. You notice there's also an audit trail at the bottom, um, which gives you some information about when it was entered, um, what was entered in, and by whom. And um, anything that changes on the ticket is going to be added to the audit trail. OK, let's go back here, and uh, we'll add a few more stages. Actually, before we add the stages, let's look at let's go back and look at the application tab. Okay, underneath the tab now, you'll see the new fields that is added automatically. So as we were entering in the workflow, it's actually added in um, the two fields that we entered in, title and details. But it's because as the workflow was created, it actually added in two other fields, originator and ticket state. Um, these are like fields that it uses in order to identify just who created the workflow, who started it, and what stage is at at that current time. When you're on an application tab, you can get back to the workflow pretty easily by clicking this bold workflows um, tab, uh, sorry, button right here, the link, or the link uh, in the tab at the bottom here. So if I click it there, you'll see it at the bottom here. This will be your list of workflows. Um, this, incidentally, is also where you can delete the workflow if you don't like the workflow. Um, you just click on the drop-down arrow at the end and click Delete uh, if you want to, or you can edit the details of the workflow. But you just click the workflow to bring up the designer like this. OK, um, we'll uh, look at how you actually go through the next stages uh, in the next video.